Okay, Algebra 2 kiddos, here we go. Um, this is the review for um, the Chapter 6 test. Now, here's the thing. I am not going to spend... Why is it there? I'm not going to spend a ton of time... Okay, hold on a second... I'm going over all of the, okay, so the first, it missed, like, the first couple sections. Oi, hold on. Ha. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, so I missed the first couple, I just, it, I had an issue halfway through my computer, so I to reboot uh, for security reasons. So, um... There needs to be kind of a general understanding of how radicals work. Uh, if you don't have that, please come see me at lunch today or tomorrow or sometime. Because if you don't have a general understanding of how these radicals work, um, it's going to be really, really difficult for you to understand the um, kind of what we're doing. And then you'll just be basically kind of guessing at it and trying to follow an example that you really don't understand. So, let's get going. So, what I want to do first is I want to break this down into its different components. Um, so, we have the square root of 36x to the fourth. And what I want to do is I want to say, okay, I want to go, that's the square root of 36 plus the... square root of x, or not plus, but times the square root of x to the fourth. Okay? So, what? Hey, Thespis. Um, so then we go, okay, the square root of 36 is 6. Now, x to the fourth is going to be x times x times x times x. Now, notice that I'm circling groups of 2. And the reason for that is that when you have um, x to the fourth, or um, so you have x to the fourth, and it's a square root. Uh, that means the square root means that for every two sets of whatever you have inside the square root, you can take one out. So I have two sets of two, so I can take them out. And that's going to give me x times x, or x squared. So the answer to number one is 6x squared. Now notice that I put a two right there in the index, and that's because when there's nothing there, we presume it to be two. Uh, the same way that uh, if there's not a coefficient in front of a variable, we presume it to be one, if there's not a sign, we presume it to be um, positive, all that good stuff. So, now here, notice for number three that we're looking for um, the fourth root. That means, unlike we're in the square root, where we'd have two of the same thing and we could pull them out, here we're going to need four of the same thing. To where we can pull them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to break 81 down. And 81 breaks down to 3 times 27. 27 breaks down to 3 times 9. And 9 breaks down to 3 times 3. So this is going to give us 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now there are 4 of those there. So that means I can take 1 out x to the 12th, I need to kind of do the same thing. Now, if you remember how to do the rational exponents, you know you can go sit there and do, okay, uh, that's 12 divided by 4, um, because x to the 12th with a 4th root, 
um, is there, and then that would be x to the third. Now, if I wrote it out the way we have been, x times x times x, if we write it out, 12 x's. Notice that when I group them by 4, I end up with three of them, three groups of four. And that's x to the third. So our answer there is 3x cubed. Okay, moving on. Now for four, five, and six, notice that all three of them have a negative in there. Um, and it doesn't matter what it is, as long as the index is variable, the third, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, the eleventh, so on and so forth. The odd root of negative one is going to be negative one. So if we're looking at number four. So that's going to be the cubed root of negative sixty-four. We can pull that negative one out. So we have the negative cubed root of sixty-four. And that's going to be 4. How do I know it's 4? Because I looked up at the chart on the side of the wall. Um, we also know that 64 is 4 cubed. Okay, so we know that, the, so this is important. It's important to understand how powers and roots kind of interact with each other. We know that the cubed root of 64 equals 4 because 4 cubed is 64. Just like we know that the cubed root of 125 is 5, because 5 cubed is 125. They're inverse operations. Okay? So, now looking at number 5, we have the fifth root of 32k to the fifth. We already pulled that negative 1 out. Like I said, we could. So, we have 32, which is 2 times 16. 16 is 2 times 8. 8 is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. And hey, look at this, we have five twos. Since we have five twos, we can pull one out. And that gives us negative two. And then the fifth root of k to the fifth is just five for the, or k for the same reason. So it's negative two k. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer to me. I was just sitting on my lap. So hopefully you guys could hear the first seven minutes of this riveting you know, expose on radical expressions. Uh, okay, so negative 243r to the 20th, and all of that is under a fifth root. So we pull out that negative 1, and then what we're going to need to do is factor out 243. So whenever I factor things out, when I'm trying to find a prime factorization, I like to start with the lowest... Um, number I can. So I want to pull up prime numbers. So I go 2. Well, 2 won't work. How about 3? So you have 243 divided by 3. And you get 3 times 81. Well, we just did 81, so we know 81 is 4 threes. We did that number 3. And hey, look, so that's 5 threes. So we know that 3 to the 5th is 243, which means that the 5th root of 243 is 3. And then if we have the fifth root of r to the 20th, that's going to give us r to the fourth, 20 divided by 5. So we have 9 as 3r to the fourth. And then everyone's favorite, we have a word problem. So it says you can approximate the speed of a falling object as the velocity v equals 8 times the square root of the distance, where v is the speed in feet per second and d is the distance in feet the object is falling. God, <laughs> express D in terms of V, okay? So what we want to do now is we want to express D in terms of V. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to solve for D. So the first thing we want to do is divide both sides by 8. So now we have the square root of D equals V over 8. How do we get rid of a square root? Why do we square it? So that's going to give us d equals v squared over 64, and that's the answer. Okay. 
Um, moving on to 6-2. Yay! So, 6-2. Um, so, what it's important to remember here is that when we multiply radicals together, um, that if they have the same index, that you simply multiply the radicands, that's the stuff inside, together. And um, when you multiply them, you know, it just... So we have the square root of 3x to the 4th times the square root of 24x cubed. That's going to give us 3 times 24, x times 4, x to the 3rd. So we separate those to make sure that we're, you know, grouping them correctly. So that's going to give us 72 times x to the 7th. So 72 breaks down to 2 times 36. Now, I know this is kind of a cheat right there, but I know that the square root of 36 is 6. So once I see something that I know is a perfect square, then I can just sit there and kind of go ahead and grab it, um, as opposed to, you know, going 36 is 2 times 18, 18, 18 is 2 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3, okay? So, x to the 7th, so I write it out as x to the 6 times x. And the reason I do that is because I know that I have a square root. So I know that I'm looking for pairs of 2. I know that 2 is an even number. So I'm going to sit there. I'm going to sit there and divide 7 by 2. Or pull out the largest even number I can. Sorry, it's like 1 o'clock. Um from uh, x to the 7th. So the nearest even number is x to the 6th. So I pull that out. And that way, when I square root that, I get x to the 3rd, and then that x is left over. So this is going to give me then 6x to the 3rd times the square root of 2x. Notice how we sat there, and with the um, square root, we took out what we had. We took a 6 out. We took an x cubed out. We multiplied those together. We multiplied what was left over inside. Same general rules apply for cubed roots. So we're going to go 4 times the cubed root of 18. That gives us 72. Now remember, that's 2 times 36. Well, that doesn't give us anything. So we're going to break it down a little bit more. That's 2 and 18. 2 and 9. And that's 3 and 3. So when we're looking here, we're looking for groups of 3. So notice here that we have two 3s and three 2s. So we're going to take one of those 2s out. And then we have 9 left over inside. It's actually a 9. I screwed up. because it's 3 times 3. So this would be 2 times the cubed root of 9 would be the answer for number 13. Moving on. So 5a cubed times 20a. Uh, both of those are square roots. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply them together, and that gives us 100a to the fourth. We take the square root of that, and that's just 10a squared. Now, on these next ones, it's important to remember that when, it's, when we're doing this division, what we're being asked to do here is work with the um, trying to get rid of the radical in the denominator, okay? So we look at this and we go, okay, we have 80 over 5. Well, one of the properties of uh, radicals is that we can rewrite the square root of 80 over the square root of 5 as the square root of 80 over 5. Uh, we then divide those. That gives us the square root of 16 or 4. Same general idea on the next one. So we have 18x to the fifth y over 2x. We divide that out and we get 9x to the fourth why 
Both of those are square roots, so we go the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of x to the 4th is x squared, and then with that y, there's nothing doing. So for 17, okay, so we did 17. So here we have, um, we know the period is three seconds. So we can plug uh, three in for T. So we have three equals two pi times the square root of L over 32. So what we want to do here is divide both sides by two pi. So that gives us the square root of L over the square root of 32. Um, we're going to square both sides because what we're trying to find here is solve for L. So that gives us 9 over 4 pi squared. So that's actually a 4 pi squared right there. Equals L over 32. And then multiply both sides by 32. So we get 72 over pi squared equals L. Now, I didn't have a calculator with me when I did this. So um, because the answer actually asked for uh, rounding there as 10th, you'd want to go divided by, you know, 9 point whatever, um, that is, and so you'd end up with an answer of about 7.2-ish. Um, so, okay, so for these, um, we're adding rational um, or radical expressions. So if the index is the same and the base is the same, and we can add them together. We basically kind of treat them like variables. So we know on 19, we have two radical sevens plus three radical sevens. So we add those together and we get five radical sevens. Now, when we look at the next ones, um, they take a little bit more kind of finessing. So we look at 21, and that's 7x plus 28x. So normally we'd say, nope, can't do it. But when we break 28x down, we see that it's four, 28 is 4 times 7, or 2 times 2 times 7. So we can take one of those sets of 2s out, and we have 2 radical 7. Put the x back in, and we have 2 radical 7x. We add that to 1 radical 7x, and we get 3 radical 7x. So, um, with number 22, we have 18 and 72. So, I know that 18 is 9 and 2, so that breaks down to 3 radical 2. And so, that gives me 72. Well, I know 72 is 6 radical 2. We already did that earlier in this. So, that gives me 3. And then, for the, three radic for the square root of 18, I need to put in 3 radical 2. So if I already have a coefficient of 3 there, I need to multiply them together. So it gives me 9 radical 2 plus 12 radical 2, or 21 square roots 2. Okay, so on these, so I like 28 here, because 28 is going to show us what we need to do for 30. So watch what happens. So we have 3 radical 5 minus 2 times 3 radical 5 plus 2. So this is what's called a conjugate. Um, they're the exact same terms, except one has a positive between them, one has a negative between them. So we use this in order to rationalize complex, or uh, in this case, radical denominators. So if we multiply these together, if we're doing it right, we should get rid of the radical. So watch what happens. We're going to FOIL these. Okay, so we have 3 times... Oh, I'm looking at 24. 
Wow, I just completely... Okay, that whole spiel I just gave, that's for uh, number 28. So keep that in mind. Um, for number 24, uh, radical 45 is 3, radical 5. So what I did here was I know that I need to be left over with a 5, so I divide 80 by 5 and get 16. So that means that 80 is 16 times 5. 16 is a perfect square. I can pull a 4 out because it's 4 times 4 times 5. So that gives me 4 radical 5. So that gives me 8 times 3 radical 5 minus 3 times 4 radical 5 or 12 radical 5. And so that gives me 12, 24 radical 5 minus 12 radical 5. And that's the answer. So um, with 25, we want to foil this. I remember first, outer, inner, last. So that gives us 2 times 3 plus 2 times radical 5 plus 3 times radical 5. plus square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Now, that gives us 6 plus 5 radical 5 plus the square root of 25. Well, we know that the square root of 25 is 5, so that gives us 6 plus 5 radical 5 plus 5. And we put it all together, and we get 11 plus 5 radical 5. Okay, remember that whole spiel I gave on number 28? Here we go. So if we're doing this right, the radical should disappear. So we have 9 times the square root of 25 plus 6 radical 5 minus 6 radical 5 minus 4. I put plus 4. That's wrong. Um, so the 6 radical 5s cancel out. 9 times the square root of 25 turns into 9 times 5 plus 4, so that gives us 45, uh, quick, correct this atrocity, there we go, see, all better, 45 minus 4, or 41, um, I wrote 49, clearly that's wrong, so we want 41 down there, but notice how by multiplying by the conjugate, I was able to completely get rid of the radical. So when we look over at number 30 and we're like, hey, um, don't do that. Uh, we're like, hey, look at 30 because we're astute mathematicians. Um, we see that there's a radical in the denominator. So what we want to do is we want to multiply it by its conjugate. So instead of 1 plus 2 radical 7, we're going to multiply it by 1 minus 2 radical 7. Okay, and then I went over to this next page. So the top, um, the numerator, the top of the fraction, uh, we're going to sit there and we're going to go, okay, that's 4 minus 3 radical 7 times 1 minus 2 radical 7, or 4 minus 8 radical 7 minus 3 radical 7 plus 6 times the square root of 49. Well, the square root of 49 is going to... Um, Reduce to 7. 7 times 6 is 42. We combine like terms in the middle. So we have 4 minus 11 radical 7 plus 42. Or 46 minus... Why aren't you moving? There we go. 46 minus 11 radical 7. The denominator, what we want to do is we foil that out, and again, we see that we have completely eliminated, sorry, I went through that so fast, we have completely eliminated um, the radical because we go 1, that's 1 times 1, minus 2 radical 7, plus 2 radical 7, minus 4 times the square root of 49. So the two middle terms cancel out, and we end up with 1 minus 28. Well, how 28? Because again, we have 4 um, on the outside, and the square root of 49 is 7. 7 times 4 is 28. Okay, so let's switch back over to here. 
So the important thing here is to realize what fractional exponents or rational exponents mean. If I have something to the one half, that's the square root. If I have something to the one third, that's the cubed root. Um, one fourth is the fourth root. And if I have something like x to the two thirds, that's gonna be x squared to the third root. I'm gonna pause so I can yawn and I'm back. So, we have 81 to the 1 half. Well, that's the same thing as the square root of 81 or 9. In your calculator, you can also do it as um, 81 to the 0. 0.5, and it'll be fine. It'll also give you 9. So, th 32... So here's another property that if we have a to the x times a to the y, that means they have the same base, different exponents. They have a to the x times a to the y, that equals a to the x plus y, okay? So here we have 36 to the fourth plus 36, times 36 to the fourth. So we say, okay, 36 to the fourth plus fourth equals one half. And 36 to the 1 half is 6. This is the square root of 6. Now, if we have something like 33 um, through 40, what that does is the other property we have is a to the x to the y power. We're raising a power to a power. We simply go ahead and multiply them together. So on 33, we're going to multiply that negative 4 thirds by 15. I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. Okay. Oh, I went too far. Um, so I have x to the negative 20, y to the 12th. Now, notice, now, if I'm looking at, um, if I wrote it out as a fraction, it would be y to the 12th over x to the 20th. Um, because when I look at negative exponents, it just means they're regular exponents, but they're in the denominator. Okay, so y to the negative 1 equals 1 over y. y to the negative 2 equals 2, you know, over 1 over y squared. y to the negative 3 is 1 over y cubed, and so on and so forth. So, um, for number 36, uh, we have negative 27. Now, that... Just like in the previous problem, we distributed that 15. We're going to distribute that third root as well. So we have negative 27 to the third root times x to the negative ninth to the third root times y to the sixth to the third root. Negative 27 to the third root. Um, so we get, so negative 27 to the third is negative 3, because 3 cubed is 27. We're going to multiply my x's together. So I have originally negative 9. I multiply that 1 by thirds, and I get negative 3. 6 by 1 third is 2. So that's my new answer. Negative 3 times x to the negative 3 times y squared. Same idea here. We're going to go negative 32 to the 1 fifth, x to the negative 10th to the 1 fifth, y to the 15th to the 1 fifth. So earlier on this worksheet, we did, we broke down 32 and realized that it was just five twos. So that gives us negative 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So that's negative x squared, or x to the negative 2, rather. Wrong way. So negative 2x minus 2y cubed.
It's not minus, it's just negative 2x and negative 2 um, times y to the third. Number 40, we have 16 to the 1 half times x to the 14th to the 1 half over 81 to the 1 half times y to the 18th um, to the 1 half. So 16 to the 1 half is 4. Half of x to the 14th will be released. And then we have our denominator 81 turns into 9. Y to the 18th, 18 divided by 2 is 9. Okay. Getting sleepy, people. Okay, so this 41 is a little tr troublesome. Because we have the square root of 5 times the third root of 5. And normally we wouldn't be able to do this. But remember, if we can turn them into rational exponents, we have 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the third. Um, and then we can just add those together. And we would get 5 to the 5 sixths. Um, or uh, 5 to the 5th and then the 6th root. So number 42, um, we have x to the x squared to the sixth. That gives me x to the one third over. So it started off as two sixths. We're going to reduce it to one third over x to the five thirds. And so here we subtract. So we have x to the one-third minus the five-thirds. That gives us negative four-thirds. And that's what it would look like, one over x to the four-thirds, or x to the negative four-thirds, the same thing. Okay, moving forward. So here what we want to do for 43, remember, the way to get rid of squares um, or square roots is to square things. So we're going to square both sides. And this is going to give us 13x minus 10 equals 9x squared. Because we went 3x times 3x. We're then going to subtract the 13x and add 10 to both sides. That's going to give us 9x squared minus 13x plus 10. So what we want to do here now that we have 9x squared minus 13x minus 10 is we want to run it through the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Well, here's the problem with this. So watch what happens is we end up with, in the radicand, or, yeah, the um, discriminant, we end up with 169 minus 360. Um, may, again, make sure you have, if you have any questions, ask me. And that's a no solution because we have a negative square root, Okay. No solutions. So looking at number 45, we're going to square both sides. That gives us 4x minus 12. And then we have x minus 3 squared. And as you can see, that gives us x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then we have x to the third. So 4 times 7 minus 12. Um, so we get 7 and 3 for the answer after we um, go through the process. And then what we want to do is we want to check for extraneous solutions. So these are solutions which maybe mathematically make sense, um, going one way through the problem, but then don't end up making any sense coming back the other way. Um, and I explained this in class, and I know that's a weird solution or weird definition, but basically what you're looking for um, are numbers that the answer spits out, but then you can't plug back in. Um, both of, so we have 
that as our check. So moving on. So for 46, notice that instead of um, square roots, they're cubed roots. All that means, oh wait, no, I'm doing 45. So 45, um, we have, oh, I, that was just checking number three. We already did it, it was seven and three. Actually, both work out, okay? Now for 46, we just have cube groups. Now we don't. Um, we just have what's ever left after you used it. Um, I'm not really sure what I just said there. I think I fell asleep halfway through my sentence um, and was thinking of something else. So we have 46. We have, we are cubing both sides. So that just takes care of the cubes. So we have 7x equals 5x plus 2. We're going to subtract 5x from both sides. We get 2x equals 2, or x equals 1. We then check that answer, x equals 1. Um, see whether or not it's an extraneous solution. It is not. We end up with 7 to the 1 3rd equals 7 to the 1 3rd. Um, 49 is a really long, complicated word problem that we're not going to have anything like. So if you want to see what it looks like, feel free to come and ask me. If not, let's skip it. So 50, 51, and 52, okay? These are composite functions. So notice here it says f of x equals 3x squared and g of x equals 2 minus 5x. So what's f of x minus g of x? We go 3x squared minus... Now remember when we are subtracting functions or anything like that, that the if we subtract a binomial or some you know, group of terms, we're changing the sign on that binomial. So we have 3x squared minus 2 minus 5x. So that negative needs to get distributed. So we have 3x squared minus 2 plus 5x. Now, I'd like you guys to start putting these in standard form. So we have 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. 51, we have f of x times g of x. It's 3x squared times 2 minus 5x. We distribute that 3x squared. We get 6x squared minus 15x to the third. Um, again, I'd want you guys to rearrange that as negative 15x to the third plus 6x squared. Um, and then finally, we have 52, which is f of x over g of x. So that's 3x squared over 2 minus 5x. Um, and that's it. And just understanding kind of how those things go together. Now, on this next step, 53 through 55, they're very similar to the ones we already did, Okay. So look at 53. It says f plus g of x. That's the same thing as f of x plus g of x. So what we do is we do 3x squared plus 2 minus 5x, or 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. And that's standard form. So notice that 51 and 54 um, are the exact same thing, so you don't need to redo that. Um, and really, it's getting you to realize that they are the same thing. So 55 is g of f of x. So it's the same general idea, um, but instead of having 3x over 2 minus 5x, we're going to have 2 minus 5x over 3 of x. Sorry, 3x squared, not 3 of x. Okay, moving on to number 59. So 59, 57 through um, 62, I don't do them in order. I actually do 59, 57, 58, and then I do 60 and 62. It's important to understand how these systems work. Okay, so if I have F O G of 2, that means that I have F of G of X of 2. So... 
what you do with this is you take the one person, the person who's like letting go of the stuff, and you go, okay. Um, again, I'm not really sure that made any sense whatsoever. Um, so, f of g of x, we're going to take that 3x plus 1, plug it into the x for f of x. And that's what this means for, to be a um, composite function. So you sit there, whoa, too much. And that turns into 3x1 squared, which is 9x squared, minus 6x plus 1, or plus 6x plus 1. And then it's of 5. Um, so it's f of g of 5. So what I do is I first do the f of x, or f of g of x, which is putting g of x, that 3x plus 1, into the equation for f of x, x squared. And then I plug a 5 in for x. That turns into 9 times 5 squared, plus 6 times, whoa, plus 6 times 5, plus 1, or 256. Okay, now look at 57. Because we're dealing with the same thing, we don't actually need to reinvent the wheel. We know f of g of x is 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. And we know that g of f of x is going to be 3x squared plus 1. Because what we did for g of f of x is we took out the x for g of x and we put in the entire f of x function there, x squared. So we end up with 3x squared plus 1. So for number 57, we're going to go ahead and um, use the exact same equation that we did for 59, the uh, 9x squared plus x, 6x plus 1. We're going to plug 2 into it. Um, and that's going to give us 9 times 4 plus 6 times 2 plus 1. And we get um, 49 for 57, and uh, 58 gives us 4,900. On 58, um, you're going to want to run that through a calculator. Uh, because you end up squaring 23 and then multiplying 6 times 23. And that can be a headache. Um, so finally, we're on to 60 and 62. Now notice both of these are g of f of x. So we're using this right here, the 3x squared plus 1. So um, what we're doing is we know that it's 3x squared plus 1. So we go 3 times negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Same thing with g of f of 0. We know that g of f is 3x squared plus 1. So we just go ahead and plug a 0 into there. Okay, so on this next problem, um, we want to go through and write down each of the different functions. So it starts off with her discount is 20%. Now, that doesn't mean that it costs 20% of its original value. It means you're saving 20%, which means that it is costing 80% of its original value. So E of X is going to equal 0.8X. B, it's marked down another 25%. Um, so that means that we're not going to put the 25% in um, now because we're not paying only 25% of the cost. We're paying 75% of the cost. That's 100% minus 25%. So M of X equals 0.75X. Now, this one's tricky with sale tax. Um, you want to add what the sale tax is, 6%, to 1. Oh, excuse me. So that gives us T of X, tax of X, equals 1.06. So we have 1.06 times 0.8 times 0.75. 
x, and that gives us 0.636x. And finally, we have our graphs. So we have 74, that's just the graph of y equals the square root of x. Looks like that. 75, that is a vertical shift because it's in the k position. So we move it down one. Notice how I am uh, labeling the starting point of the graph. I'd like you guys to do that. 76, we're moving up three. They get a little bit more complicated as we go along. Um, so 77 is at the square root of x plus 3. Remember, if it's underneath the radical sign and it's a plus, that moves means we are moving to the left. Okay, And remember, we went over this in class. Because think about what I need to do to get that equation to equal 0. Okay, So I know that it's x plus 3. Well, how do I get it to 0? Because if I put a 0 in there, I get plus 3. So I'd have to put in a negative 3 in there. So that's why it moves to the left 3. Uh, because if I put a negative 3 in there, the point is negative 3, 0. Um, and that's what 78 and 79 look like. 78 and 79, the only things that are different are the coefficient. That's... What? Um, so number 78 extends it a bunch. And number 79 compacts it. Um, 83, uh, we have it moving a five to the right and two up. And then for 81 and 82, that's what our graph should look like. So on 81, we have that plus 1 underneath the cubed root sign, which means that we moved um, 1 to the right. Or sorry, left, because it's underneath there. So we need a negative 1 to get the entire value back down to 0. So that's where it goes through the x-axis. 82, we have two... Um, things we need we need to move down three and that negative two actually moves us, us positive uh, to the right because if I put it two in there then two minus two is zero so over two down three and then that's that so I hope you enjoyed me falling asleep and talking nonsense and hopefully you learned something if you have any questions feel free to come in during uh, lunch I will have be there either blue block um i again i'm it's 1 30 in the morning i'm exhausted and i'm gonna close this